Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. By the way, I'm in the process. Uh, my wife and I are, are going to buy, we're going to buy me a rug for the floor. We're going to move some shelves around so that I'll have library in the background. And hopefully that's going to absorb some of the uh, some of the echo in here. And not only that, I am hoping, huh, it's been very frustrating. I, I'm hoping to get my camera back up online. And that means uh, that I'll have more of a, a, a better quality microphone. And I'm, in fact, I'm going to put a boom microphone right here on the desk uh, so that it will come over and it will be right here. Uh, I won't be getting the reverberations off, off the walls and floor and because it's tile floors and, uh, <laughs> you know, concrete floors. And so hopefully the quality of the audio is going to improve over the next little bit. I, but I tell you what, uh, we are still in the process of moving stuff. Uh, we still... We haven't found a whole bunch of the stuff that we moved out of my office. And so anyway, uh, I hope this reverberation, this echo sound that you're hearing is not too distracting for you. There's nothing I can do about it at the specific point of time, but we are working on it. We really honestly are working on it. So again, thank you for joining me here on my morning musings. Hopefully the audio will get better. Okay. Well, we are continuing our study of Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following. Keep in mind, nobody within the evangelical community denies that Matthew 25, 31 and following is the prediction of the new creation. Okay. It was predicting what Peter said, 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, I know the term new creation, new heaven, new earth is not found in Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following. But I also know, having been raised as a fifth generation on millennialist, that's how everyone applies. Matthew 25, 31 and following. So, since Isaiah 66 is the source for the New Testament doctrine of the new heaven and new earth, and again, virtually no one denies that. Now, some people try to play games with that, as I shared with you yesterday, and they say, well, yeah, here's what Isaiah predicted, but the New Testament writers radically change it to where they say something diametrically opposed to what Isaiah said. Well, Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, said, according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and new earth. But according to the interpretation of some people, who say that the New Testament writers turned Isaiah 65 on its head, and whereas Isaiah 65 talks about infants being born, sinners being present, death being present, you know, they tell us, no, none of that, none of that is present. Hmm. They forget that the New Testament writers are focused on the death, not death generically. Anyway, enough on that. So let's get right back to it because there's something else. Yesterday, I shared with you how Isaiah 66 and its prediction of the new heaven and new earth predicted a new priesthood. If you didn't catch that, please go back and look, go back and watch that video. It is so very important. So today, I want to notice another aspect of Isaiah chapter 66. Keep in mind, Isaiah 66 foretold the coming of the Lord in Matthew 25, 31 and following. So if what, if what Isaiah 66 foretold has come into reality, that means that Matthew 25, 31 and following has also been fulfilled and all attempts to divide the Olivet Discourse into Matthew 24, 4 to 34, 80, 70, and Matthew 24, 35 through chapter 25, verse 46, are the, quote, end of the Christian age, totally falsified. I'm sorry. If Isaiah 66 
foretold the coming of the Lord of Matthew 25, 31 and following folks. I'm sorry. All claims to a divided Olivet Discourse are simply specious and false and untenable. Well, Isaiah 66 foretold something about the new heaven and the new earth. You know what it foretold? Evangelism. Now, yesterday I reminded you that Sam Frost and Jeremiah Nortier produced about four videos. And in those videos, they were just absolutely insistent that in the new creation, there will be, from their perspective, there will be no evangelism. Well, why? Well, according to them, Revelation chapter 21 says that in the new creation, there is absolutely no sin. Thus, no evangelism. Now, first off, okay, first off, we have to keep in mind that Jesus said, Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away. My words will never pass away. Now look, folks, that could not get any clearer. It could not be any more specific, unambiguous, or explicit. And yet, when I point out repeatedly that the new creation of Christ, the church, the church age, the new covenant kingdom has no end, no end. Luke 1, 32 to 33, the angel told Mary that the child that she was going to be uh, going to bear would be, give, would be given the throne and the, the kingdom and he would sit on the throne of his father David without end. No end to Christ's kingdom. And so all of a sudden, those who have traditionally argued that at the, at the coming of the Lord, Christ surrenders the kingdom, you know, he must reign until all, en all enemies are put under his feet. Then shall he deliver the kingdom to the Father. And men such as the late Wayne Jackson, outspoken critic of covenant eschatology, and a host of other commentators as well said, it's more than obvious that at his coming, Christ no longer rules because he surrenders the kingdom to the Father. Well, how could his kingdom, how could his throne be without end if he surrenders the kingdom? You see the problem? Secondarily, Hebrews chapter 12, 28 and following, the writer speaking to the first century saints said, wherefore we receiving, that is a present participial form, meaning they were in the process of receiving the kingdom that can never or cannot be shaken. Well, the word shaken there is the same word used in the context to speak of the old covenant kingdom being shaken, the old covenant heaven and earth, by the way. And as William Lane points out in the word biblical commentary, it is more than obvious that Hebrews is using the term heaven and earth to speak of the old covenant, not literal, physical, heaven and earth. So the old covenant, heaven and earth, the old covenant world was being shaken, would no longer be operative. Okay, catch the power of that. The law of Moses would no longer be operative. And thus the writer could say in Hebrews chapter eight and verse 13, regarding the promise of the new covenant given in Jeremiah chapter 31. He says, in that he says a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which is old has or is becoming, has become obsolete and is ready to pass or ready to vanish away. In other words, it would no longer 
be functional. It would no longer be operative. And you may be going, what's the point? The point is, futurists tell us that in the new heaven and in the new earth, there is no more evangelism, which means the gospel of Jesus Christ, which was established to preach forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life in the unending kingdom will cease to function. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12 tells us the gospel, the new covenant kingdom will never be shaken, meaning it will never cease to function. Just like Jesus has said, or Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass. My words will never pass away, never cease to function. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If the traditional view of the new heaven and new earth is accurate, meaning there is no more sin, no more sinners, then there is no need for evangelism, obviously. But that means that the gospel of Christ, which will never pass away, and that means that the new covenant kingdom which can never cease to function, will in fact pass away, will in fact cease to function. I mean, after all, if you're going to say, as many people try to when they're confronted with these facts, well, I'm not saying the kingdom is ever going to come to an end. It will just enter a new phase. That's one of the favorite explanations. Well, that new phase, according to them, means the gospel is no longer preached to sinners to convert them from their sin. And it means that the gospel is no longer preached in this unending kingdom. And thus that kingdom, which would never cease to function will in fact cease to function. So once again, the futurist view of the new heaven, new earth flips the script, turns the text completely on its head. And that's not all. I'm out of time for today, but hey, listen, go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, up at the top, you'll see a banner advertising my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. When you order that book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings, you will receive absolutely, totally free of charge my book, In Flaming Fire, which is an in-depth exegesis of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that we've been covering here on Morning Musings, as well as Can God Tell Time? totally free, no extra shipping whatsoever. And I'm going to ship the whole order to you without shipping, without shipping cost. I'm telling you, you can't beat a deal like that. Okay, we'll pick back up on evangelism in the new creation on the flip side. I'll see you there.